It's been a while since I did a face cam video of an episode of Racing Topics of the Emperor's. Not changes tonight. Hey YouTube, your favorite YouTuber here, Ian Press 40 is here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics of the Emperor's. I believe this is episode 36 or 37, I'm not really sure. And today we're gonna be talking about uh the past weekend, uh the 2021 Relics 24 at Daytona. Where do I begin with that race? Whew. Coming into the race, there's been a lot of storylines. Mainly, um, the main big stories have been Chase Elliott in the 31 Action Express, Jimmy Johnson in the second Action Express car in the number 48. Chase was in the 31, by the way. Um, Wayne Taylor Racing in Acura. The last year, GTLM being a class. Um... Man, there was just a lot of good storylines coming in. Oh, Robert Kubica, Formula One driver. Uh, he was in as well. Kevin Magnuson, who just got out of Formula One. is following his father's put in footsteps and is racing in sports cars. Great to see a Magnuson back on track in a sports car world. And, man, there's just been good storylines. And... Not even like completing the first minute of the race. We already had the GTLM mess up uh, thanks to one of the BMW cars. Uh, I, I believe the 79 like did not get a good start. BMW got a better start. And they were all playing bump cars. 79 spun. And everybody was avoiding the 79 and one of the Ferraris. Like almost got into the 79. Oh my goodness. That was scary as hell. But I'm glad nobody wrecked at the start. 79 just spun and got back on track. So, thank, thankfully nobody wrecked. And I gotta tell you what about the race in general. On the first day of the Rock 24, the BMW, well, let me say this. The BMWs, man, they've been taking out, like, they cost, like, um, like, takeouts. They took like some cars out like three times. The one from the start, um, the Myers Shank cars, and I think the LMP2 or an LMP3 car. I know it wasn't intentional, but that's been the first half of the Rolex 24 in a nutshell. Sorry about Charlie. He's barking in the background. Not sure what he's barking about, but yeah. But yeah, that was the the first half of the Rolex 24 in a nutshell. There's been some spins, mostly spins, some crashes here and there, but no major crashes, thankfully. Um, but regardless, the first half of the race, you know how it is. It's always like good racing. Like, let's talk about the Daytona prototype class. Every single time, every single time, whatever they race in the Rolex 24 or anywhere else, in the IMSA season, they're always, always, always competitive as hell. And they always bring up an amazing show. They always bring up an amazing show. Whew. Honestly, throughout the whole race, I thought a Cadillac was going to win the race. Personally, like, I didn't think, like, Wayne Taylor Racing was going to win. Like, it's their first year with Acura. And it's, they're going to run good. They're going to learn to be an Acura team from... By the way, uh, they got it from Roger Penske, by the way. Um, like, I didn't expect them to, like, lead, like, or dominate or win. Honestly, I didn't think they were going to win. And, and then, like, in the closing hours of the race on Sunday, the, the biggest surprise of the battle... On Sunday's closing laps of the race was the 55 Mazda. Where did they come from? Where did they come from? That's something I love about the DPI classes. It, the racing is fantastic. It's, it's it's nothing but unpredictability. It's amazing. The main factors were um, Chip Ganassi, White Taylor Racing. Um, the number five Mustang, uh, simply, yeah, god damn, I forgot the name. The number five DPI, I don't, uh, they had some issues. The 31 Action Express wheeling car, 
aka Chase Elliott's car to the NASCAR fans, um, they've had problems. So it was like mainly five car battle. Meyer Shank Racing. I think they were they were the only time we see them battle was like like on restarts and some parts, but they were like not really a factor. But they were there. And at the end of the day, we every, everybody, honestly, I thought as well we were going to see an amazing battle for the win between Wayne Taylor Racing and Chip Ganassi Racing. I thought, like, um, Van Der Zand was going to give Ricky Taylor the run for his money. Or was it Felipe Albuquerque that drove the 10? And honestly, unfortunate. And honestly, like, sorry, I can't speak. I always messed up. Um, I thought everybody thought we were gonna see that battle. And unfortunately, like, like seven or eight minutes to go, the number zero one Chip Ganassi Racing Cadillac DPI. They blew a tire again, and I say again because <clears throat> almost four hours to go. They brought out the yellow for a tire down. I thought Joseph, Joseph and I thought they blew up an engine, but no, it was a tire down. I, actually, I was like, no, Joseph, it was a it was a tire down and all that. And then, you know, on the closing laps of the race, it happened again. I is it weird that I'm still in shock that they blew a tire again with a few minutes to go? I have no idea what happened. They made uh, Van Der Zand probably used too much uh, of his tires and all that stuff. Probably like drove too hard, raced too hard. That caused the tire down. I'm not 100% sure, but it was a devastating loss for Chip Ganassi Racing. It would have been awesome to see Chip Ganassi Racing uh, get their first Rolex 24 DPI win since 2015. But that was not the case. But they ran one hell of a race, and I'm looking forward to seeing them race in Sebring. But, of course, for the third year in a row, and their fifth time in a Rolex 24, Wayne Taylor Racing got the win at Daytona. And, of course, you guys know how I feel about Wayne Taylor Racing. I'm a huge Wayne Taylor Racing fan. I'm a crazy fan, and... I just did not expect this. I just did not expect this. I, I didn't think they were going to win. And here we are again. Here we are again. And guess what? The first race with Acura. They did it again. They're just the best team in the business. I, I know I probably sound biased because they're my favorite team. But like, they're just the best team in the business at this point. They're at this point. They're threats. They're threats. And it's this is like the the another team that got their third straight Rolex twenty four win since Chip Ganassi from like the mid two thousands. Oh my god, the race was just incredible. Um, in a GTLM, oh yeah, you know what that means. Time to get my Chevy hat again. Here we are again. Corvette dominated. Yep. Corvette dominated. They were 1 2 for most of the race. And I'm speechless about this. Like, last year, it didn't work too well because it was the first year with the mid engine C8 R car. It didn't work out too well. Four had problems. Three wasn't really there after spinning and stuff. BMW uh, dominated. But nope, this year, yep, yep, Corvette won. And guess what? One, two, finish. That's even better. Let's go. And then Jordan Taylor uh, was doing burnouts and almost crashed. Unbelievable. Of course, the video, uh, it's been popular. Like, big shout out to David Land, Kyle Cooperson, aka Racing Nation TV, for making that video. That's insane. I mean, like, you can't see because there's smoke all over the place. Like, so what can you do? But thankfully, the car did not crash. Whew. Um, so yeah. 
And ironically, they won like 20 years. Like, here's the thing, like 20 years ago, Dale Earnhardt was with, uh, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was with Corvette, with Kelly Collins, and, oh crap. I'm a noob for, I'm a noob when it comes to sports cars, so of course. But anyway, they were with uh, Corvette number three 20 years ago. And everybody knows that they won a bunch of times after 2001, especially the the one two photo finish 2016. But this year it was just a dominant performance. So let's go. And on the GTD, I remember the 5721 racing hard for lead, and then they took out each other. Oh my! And then apparently the 57 Mercedes car. Apparently it's a new team and they won. Oh yeah, that's incredible. Let me get my hat. Let me get my wool power hat back on. And then in LMP2, I think Spencer Piggy, one of my favorite IndyCar drivers, won the Rolex 24 in that class. And then in LMP3, the number 18 Era Motorsports car won. Honestly. It's very special because a six-year-old boy named Owen designed that car, and yeah, <laughs> a six-year-old paint scheme livery won the Rolex 24, and that's amazing. That's amazing. I really, really hope we get to see more kids uh, d um, doing the paint scheme livery designing in a future for motorsports, because it's awesome. We see, we see that in NASCAR. Um, I know a kid did a helmet design of Lando Norris, and that's amazing. And I really hope we get to see that kind of stuff more often, because it's wholesome, it's beautiful. Man, so, what do I think about the race in general? Honestly, another amazing Rolex 24 in the books, and it's just competitive once again. It's just, it's awesome. Another awesome race. I am very excited for the 2021 IMSA season. I really hope like they don't get fucked again like last year. Um, Sebring, the 12 hours of Sebring. I'm looking forward to that as well. And just another great race. 12 cautions, I believe. That's insane. Um... And people are saying, like, is the 2021 uh, 24 Hours of Daytona a classic one? And I thought about it. I'm like, is the Rolex 24 from this year a classic one? Because, like, there was a bunch of competitiveness, a lot of action, a bunch of yellows. And is it memorable? And I may sound biased to some again, but honestly, yeah. Because... It's the Rolex 24, like, that That race from this past weekend was competitive. And just to let you guys know this series, I'm just a fan. I'm not, like, like um, a news, motorsports news content creator. I'm just a motorsports fanatic talking about racing. That's what racing topics with the Perez means. So, yeah. Another great Rolex 24 in the books. I'm looking forward to next year, and I'm looking forward to the rest of of the of the season and i want to know what you guys think what do you guys think about the, the 2021 Rolex like 24 did you guys uh, stay up all night to see the race did you guys see the entire 24 hour race did you guys pull an all-nighter did you not all that stuff oh before i before i forget the qualifying race honestly i think it was a good idea that they did the qualifying race at daytona um, it's like a sprint race. And honestly, it's a pretty good, good idea. I know it was like crazy at the start and eh, calm at the end or most of the race. Uh, because the rain from earlier now it was shiny, uh, sunshine, like most of the race after the rain. But I think it's a good idea and I believe the qualifying race for IMSA, it should be for Daytona only. No other race. Uh, no other crown jewel endurance race event, only Daytona. That's my personal opinion. What do you guys think about the qualifying race at Daytona? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. And this is, and I wanted to say, this is the Impressive 48 signing off. 
comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts and a link in the description below. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more content. Thank you guys for supporting your nation. This is Ian Press 48 signing off and let's go Corvette! And wait until the racing as well. Goodbye everybody.